Hello there, it's me, Steve Royal, in my, what I've, what I've called my third home. This is my little summer house. Um, my main house, just over there, at the end of the garden, and then that's what I consider my second home. I've mentioned this before, the Grand Theatre in Blackpool, where I spend many a Christmas doing these pantomimes. Oh, yes, I do. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do that again because you didn't join in. Listen, I know you sat at home probably watching this, but you still gotta join in. I do pantomime every year at the Grand Theatre. Here's some of the leaflets. Oh, yes, I do. That's better. That's better. Right, let's talk about some of the other. Last time I talked about Snow White with the fabulous uh, Kenny Baker and Ruth Maddock. Let's move on, shall we? Let's move on to this pantomime. Again, it's one of the ones that I've only ever done once. Dick Whittington. Dick Whittington with Ray Ma. Now, again, this is when it gets exciting because it, the likes of Ray Ma at the time was huge. He, he just took a year's break, I think, from being Alf in, oh, not, not even a year, maybe a couple of months off, and came to Blackpool to do pantomime for us. And we were all dead excited because he was like, I suppose, in, in Daf he, it seems ridiculous, it's all at home and away, but... He was uh, an international star, I guess. Oh, again, what a lovely fella. And he was brilliant as King Rat. He was really, really good. Um, I'll tell you the most notable thing about this pantomime. This was directed by John Emmanuel. Now, John Emmanuel, lovely, lovely man. And, you know, no detriment to any of the other directors I've had. I've had some wonderful directors. But he was probably the most influential in the sense that he inspired me to think beyond just going on stage and juggling. I remember turning up, all the other pantomimes, I'd al already done a lot of my material. I'd done the big giant beanbag juggling. I'd done um, the guitar juggling, I think, in Jack and the Beanstalk. I think of them with the huge bottles and things. And he was the guy, I remember, it came to my little section. They always give me a little section at the start of the pantomime to do my little bit of juggling in. And I remember performing this little routine I'd got together. And at the end of it, it just went, well, what's the relevance of that? I remember being really upset at the time and quite offended. And I said, well, it's just my juggling spot and that's what I do. But he says, yeah, but it's got no reference to Dick Whittington or the story. And I, I suddenly, do you know what? It's one of those moments that I talk to. I talk to young people and if there's anyone, you know, any young up and coming acts, comedians, entertainers of any kind, take on board, listen to advice. It's the most important lesson I can tell you now is listen to me telling you to listen to others. OK, very important because instead of reacting as I might have done and just going, oh, I don't know what he's talking about, not gone into a sulk. I took on board what he said and it quite quickly became perfectly clear that yeah it's not about going on stage and just showing off your juggling skills pantomime it's about making sure it's part of the story and ever since that year doing Dick Whittington I think you'll find that every single juggling routine or every single bit of juggling has been kind of relevant or sort of the props that I'm juggling for, for example or whatever I'm doing has been relevant to the pantomime see that year I went away after being a bit disappointed from his little bit, not a telling off, but a, a little bit of a, an ego knock, if you like. And I started to think, right, what would we have? We are on a ship. We had the captain, Mark II. Uh, coincidentally, Mark II, I worked with his daughter in 1996, 1995, 96, on a cruise ship. So I knew Mark II before this pantomime. The wonderful Charles Burden was the dame. Uh, Janine Jones is now, I think, on Rock FM. I think it was Rock, Rock, Rock FM with Stephen Marsh. Um, lovely. Yeah, she was brilliant. Again, it was great cast. Andrew Newton Lee. Uh, he lives in Los Angeles now. I think he has a business over there doing something. I don't think he's acting anymore. But um, yeah, so I went away and I rethought the idea and I thought, right, we're on a ship. What can I juggle with? And I think that year was the first year I juggled with mops and buckets and things like that. And we had a whole routine. Oh, I built up a whole juggling routine using stuff from the ship. So like I said, I like to think that every year since that, I've been a bit more conscientious about performing for the panto and not just performing for myself, if you get my idea. So that's why that was such an influential pantomime. Let's move on, shall we? That was, oh, was that all four? That's all six or seven, that one. So sort of six or seven. Uh, or 708. Now then. Oh, back with the lovely Ruth again. 
Ruth Maddock returned. This time she wanted to be a goodie. She was a baddie in Snow White, so she wanted to be a goodie this time. And we had Ian Rogerson as well. Ian Rogerson was there um, with the brilliant Natalie Cleverly. Now, Natalie Cleverly, not only was she, she was the choreographer at the time, and I think training under her was the lovely Katie Hill, who has been choreographer every year since. And she kind of took her under a wing. She's a lovely, she still is, a lovely lady, Natalie. Lovely, lovely girl. Um, we got on really well. We had a real good laugh. Lots of good times. And that was the first pants I did with a brilliant Dougie Mounts as well. He's, again, another guy who's sadly no longer with us, but he was a fabulous dame. Jessica Punch, she she, uh, she came to the pantomime this year. She came to see Peter Pan. And Sean Dalton was the prince that year. He's gone on to do big things in the West End and still does pantomime, I think, this year. I think he was back doing uh, Beauty and the Beast down in Aylesbury after it was in Blackpool last year. Anyway, I digress. So this one, this pantomime, Sleeping Beauty, I'll be honest, I, I've never been the biggest fan of the Sleeping Beauty story. I always think it's a very quick story. But because of that, there, there's, there's always benefits of any of these things. Because it it's such a, you know, it, she falls asleep, she wakes up 100 years later and everything's all right, the, 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 with a kiss, etc. Because it's such a simple story, you've got to fill in the gaps. And so in some respects, there's more chance to play around with the script there's more chance to put funny pieces in so again it, it, it's, it's got it listen every pantomime has its pros and its cons and um that particular pantomime sleeping beauty although it's not my favorite was still very memorable uh, it was a little bit chaotic as i go oh no that was going back i was going to say that that was it yeah bless her ruth maddock she she's never had the best of luck during pantomimes i'll just go back to snow white very briefly but when we did snow white she slipped on some ice fluid it's always a bit dodgy we ever have the smoke effect on the stage and there's some ice on the, the ice the fluid that they put in the machine it's very very slippy like oil and she slipped leaving the stage once and i remember just hearing the prince on the, I was down, I was crossing over the stage, underneath the stage where you can get to the other side. And I just hear the prince doing the same line over and over again. She'll be here in a minute, I'm sure. She'll be here. She'll be here in a minute. Anyway, she she wasn't because she'd fallen in the wings. So I came on and we did a little bit of banter. We had to stop the show. I remember me and um, little Trevor, who was the daughter, Trevor, the brilliant Trevor Jones. He'll be back in Panto this year. And uh, he, he and me went on stage. And I think we performed for about half an hour and in front of the audience while Ruth Ruth had to go off to hospital. She was in so much pain, she'd, she'd fallen. I think she'd actually fractured a cheekbone by the end of, it, end of it all. But in the ensuing chaos, the unknown to us, we were trying to entertain the audience that were there. It was a typical, the show must go on moment. And we went on and entertained me and Trevor, the whole house for 20 to 30 minutes. And then I got a whisper in me saying, right, we're ready to carry on. All right, we're ready to carry on. But, but, but before we do, before we do, before we do. And then got given a piece of paper with a few changes. And basically in that half hour, the whole cast, and this is how professional it is and how brilliant it is, company. And the, the crew, I should mention here, are exceptional at the Grand Theatre. But it, we all pulled together for Panto. And on this moment is probably the greatest example. We got I did a little note in my hand. I said, right, Snow White has been in the forest now with the dwarf for several years. So much so, so she's changed her hair colour. And what happened was the girl who was, Michelle Hughes, who was Snow White, because she knew the Queen's line, knew Ruth Maddox's lines, she took over as the evil queen for the second half of the pantomime. And the girl, one of the dancers, bless her, she took over as Snow White. And we continued the pantomime and finished it that day. And I think Ruth was back with us within a couple of days after that. But that was probably the most chaotic of them all. And then bless her, Ruth, when we did Sleeping Beauty, when she came back to do Sleeping Beauty, she um, was doing a, fl a little flying scene and poor lad on the pulling the rope pulled a little bit too fast and flew her right into the wing and just, <laughs> I'm laughing. I shouldn't laugh at poor Ruth Maddock going, what? But it, hidey high, hidey high, loady low. That was the loady low point in her life, in her career. Um, listen, we'll talk more about pantos. But for now, that's the end of this episode. <laughs>